Good evening guys, this is uh, Dr. Paul once again this evening. Thanks for taking your time to watch our videos and uh, as always I invite you to visit our website at uh, www.usmlevideos.net that is www.usmlevideos.net and uh, tonight I would like to mention a few points regarding uh, subdural hematoma and uh, epidural hematoma and uh, no matter what step you are taking step one step two step three you are going to face some of these questions on your examination so it's very important to know the fundamentals of these bleedings first of all let us talk about epidural hematoma then subdural hematoma in order to understand these uh, hemorrhages in the brain you must know some of the basic anatomical details of the skull otherwise you will be confused and uh, you will have no clue how to get a start so let us uh, go through a very few fundamental anatomical details of the skull first of all the brain is covered by three basic membranes and then on the top of these membranes you have the skull below the skull there is dura mater and underneath the dura mater there is arachnoid membrane and underneath the arachnoid membrane there is pia mater pia mater is right on the surface of the brain tissue so the eg mnemonic is pad brain tissue then the pia matter then arachnoid membrane then the dura mater so the pad 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 works as a very good mnemonic to remember this so pia matter is directly on the surface of the brain tissue so the sub pia hemorrhage there is no such thing as like that but whenever the hemorrhage happens under the pia matter it automatically becomes intracerebral hemorrhage and remember what is on the top of uh, pia matter there is arachnoid membrane so if the hemorrhage happens between the arachnoid membrane and the pia matter it becomes the subarachnoid hemorrhage and what is above the arachnoid membrane there is dura mater so if the hemorrhage happens between dura mater and arachnoid membrane it becomes subdural hemorrhage what is above dura mater there is a skull so if the hemorrhage happens between the skull and dura mater it becomes epidural hemorrhage so you got there what is a hemorrhage by just looking into the anatomical details now if it is intracerebral hemorrhage you will have definitely headache nausea vomiting and uh, those are the basic uh, symptoms and uh, risk factors like hypertension smoking anticoagulation you can see those things and the all of these hemorrhages the most important thing you need to remember that the definitive diagnosis is by CT scan so you should always remember the diagnostic study of choice is CT scan and then the symptoms and signs actually when it comes to intracerebral hemorrhage they, de they depend on the location if it is pons for example there will be pinpoint pupils, there will be respiratory depression, those things. If it is thalamus, for example, there will be contralateral sensory loss. And if it is basal ganglia, there will be contralateral motor signs. If it is in cerebellum, you will see nausea, vomiting, ataxia, gaze paralysis, those things. So that's a different topic we can leave it for some other time but when it comes to epidural hematoma you will see headache there will be a, there, there, there can be a history of trauma and the other things very very important things you will see a lucid interval and it is lens shaped hematoma so remember like this L and L lucid interval 
That means patient immediately he gets this confusion, but he talks well. He is very nice. He is very clear. Lucid means clear. So he talks to you with a shining, clear details, but soon he will go into confusion, depression and coma. So lucid interval, interval is very characteristic of epidural hematoma. The other thing is it's lens shaped. That is a biconvex. Biconvex. So remember lucid and lens, they go together with epidural hematoma. The other thing also you can actually put into this mnemonic is limited to the lines. That means the suture lines, they define the boundary of epidural hematoma. So epidural hematoma, it does not cross the suture lines. So you can say limited to lines. So you got a nice mnemonic right there. Lucid interval, lens shaped hematoma and limited to lines. That is epidural hematoma. So, but epidural hematoma, it can put enormous pressure on the brain tissue. That's why herniation of the brain stem is a very, very likelihood. Especially when you see pupillary dilatation on the ipsilateral side and contralateral hemiparesis. You should always deal with it immediately. The treatment is immediate neurosurgical consultation because a burr hole has to be driven into the brain in order to evacuate this hematoma. The next thing I want to talk about is um, subdural hematoma. The videos are not working sometimes and if you lose it, I will talk about it later. But let us see some of the most important things. Subdural hematoma just go opposite to epidural hematoma. You see, in epidural hematoma, it is mostly arterial blood. It's arterial blood. But in subdural hematoma, it is venous blood. The mnemonic is SUV. Subdural hematoma, venous in origin. And in epidural hematoma, we, sa we said that it is a lens shaped biconvex whereas in subdural hematoma it is biconcave so those are the very very important things trauma again is the most common cause hemiparesis and um, you can also say um, confusion depression and again pupillary dilatation on the ipsilateral side and uh, hemiparesis on the contralater contralateral side are the indications for the immediate burr hole. That is to treat, otherwise brain stem will herniate. And uh, so as I said, it is a uh, crescent shape that is uh, biconcave shaped. And uh, uh, so you need to remember these points and uh, I hope it helps. And uh, if you have any questions, just uh, consult the basic thing is remembering the anatomical detail pad pia matter arachnoid and the dura matter and um, subdural and epidural are the most important most of the times you can actually differentiate them on the basis of this fundamental differences epidural arterial subdural venous epidural biconvex, subdural, biconcave, epidural, lucid interval, biconvex, uh, sorry, subdural, no lucid interval. So those are the main points you should always remember and neurosurgical consultation is something you must do in all these cases and uh, bar holes, they are very, very important. In fact, it's not something new, you see. Even in some of these skulls excavated, they showed burr holes. Why? Because they used to put the burr holes to evacuate the hematomas. And uh, that's what we are doing even now. Of course, we give anesthesia, but that's what we do basically. We evacuate and many people survive. Many people survived even centuries ago when doctors used to put the burr holes. Thank you very much.